Hi folks, this is Anne with an impromptu an anagram on debugging one of those pesky um, parsing token problems. So um, I believe that you can see my main screen and um, I'm over here. This, this student asked me a question. He's been generous about letting me use his um, code and his errors in the past, so I'm going to assume it's okay with him for me to debug his code in front of everybody. Um, he's so close. So um, the question is, uh, in the final step, right before you're able to play the game um, for this week's Battleship application, um, he's got code in here that looks about right, but it's getting a parsing error. So um, let's just match this up with where it is in the book. Let me bring the book over. Um, I've, got a, I've got a PDF copy of the book, which is handy, although I always prefer to work out of, it's handy for demos, I actually always prefer to work out of a paper copy myself. So um, we're in this section about trying to, at the very end, after everything else is working, actually make this a game by placing random ships and always instead of always putting the ships in the same place. So let's just go down and look at what the student was trying to accomplish. Um, oh, jumping around. Okay. So here, this is the method, the function that he's trying to write. And um, he looks to me like he's pretty much got the right code. Um, I don't see anything wrong with the code. Clearly what's happening is it doesn't seem to be in the right place. And the question is, where should it be? Um, so let's just take a quick look. Um, first thing I always do is I try um, applying code formatting, which doesn't seem to be changing anything. And that kind of goes along with having a parsing error that you often, um, you often, the IDE can't, reformat it if it can't parse it right. So let's just make sure this is a real error because um, occasionally the IDE will give us rarely warnings but um, uh, rare, rarely errors but sometimes warnings that aren't turn out not to be real problems. And I made the classic mistake of trying to run my JavaScript so let's go back to battle.html, run this file, bring it up. Um, at least some code is running because the, the page is painting. I'm going to inspect. Yes, I definitely have an error. I open up my console log and the JavaScript engine and the IDE are in agreement that there is an unexpected token at that line 146. So that kind of sanity check is always important. Um, the next thing I do uh, I don't know that you guys use this very often. You've rarely had code complicated enough to really make it useful, but there's an outline tab over here that the more complicated code gets, the uh, more useful it is. So for example, particularly in this file, if you wanted to work on some code, the outline view lets you simply see this outline and be able to go up here and double click on this and it'll take you right to display message. Or if you want to double check that, you know, say you're working on testing and your, your parse guess method doesn't seem to be working very well, you can click on that and actually get straight to that. Okay. So let's take a look. We have a controller that has a process guess message. Um, so parse guess is outside any of the objects. Process guess is here. Um, we have some functions that aren't inside any object. So you can see here that the view, this is useful, you can see that the view has three methods. Okay, you can see that this model has two methods. Here is a function that lives outside any of the objects, and then controller only has the method process guess. Okay, so it has one da data property and one function property. Um, these listeners are supposed to be outside any particular object, but this is very strange. So this notation is highly unusual. So let's just click on that and see where it takes us. Oh, it takes us exactly where the generate ship locations problem is. 
And if I click on the next one that's kind of weird, I get that. So even the outline um, view, everybody seems to be indicating that that's all a problem. So let's just go back to the directions in the book for a minute and just review. We're trying to write three methods, okay? This is at the very end. So we've already done our controller code, our view code, our model code. And like this book always does, you do all of that with a, with a set uh, of, you know, kind of a static set of data so that you know how to test it. And then at the very end, we come along and we make the actual um, ships random so that the game is, is gameful and can be played by somebody who doesn't know where the locations are. So we're going to write three functions and we're going to make them methods. And I think the key thing to look at here is this line. Okay, it says it here probably most clearly. We're adding this method to the model object. And up here, again, we've already completed a model object code, but now we're going to go back and we're going to take, we're going to write three functions and make them methods inside the model object. And my guess is that's the problem. Because this is, I mean, this is written with the syntax of being a property of an object, but it's simply not inside the model object code. So I think, let's just take a look and see if the, we have three methods in a row here. Yeah, so we have three bits of code here at the bottom of the file above init, which makes sense because we've been kind of adding date, we've been adding code to this file sort of from top to bottom all along. But what I'm gonna do is, um, one thing I can do is fold these guys. So that's the generate ship locations. If I click in the gutter here on this little thing that doesn't show up until you're hovering over it, I can fold those functions into small things, okay? And there may still be, looks like there's still a problem here where the body of the function here and here's a return. But let's just take our heart in our hands and I can grab this code when it's folded, which makes it much easier to grab all of it. Let's leave a couple of blank lines. And I'm going to control exit. And then I'm going to go up here to my model. And once again, I'm going to fold things here so that I can kind of see, here's the top of the model, here's the bottom of the model. I'm going to control V the code that's in my, in my clipboard. I'm going to close it up again, just, just I think this makes it so much easier to see what's happening. Okay. okay, so now we're close. We still have an error on this, okay, but it's changed a little bit. The unexpected token is generate ship locations and not the, um, not a parentheses or a semicolon. And actually in this view, it's pretty easy to see what's happening. When you add a property, you need to come after the property before it. So I'm going to put a comma there. Okay. Um, I'm almost certain I still have a problem down here, but um, I believe given that we don't have any red X's over here, I can probably at least apply formatting. So let me do that. Uh, not, not formatting. Here we go. Apply code formatting. Okay. And see how these guys all jump out? line up and this guy doesn't quite so i think there's still a problem here um another feature i guess i should point out is you can also if it doesn't freak you out because you think you've lost all your code you can fold all okay and get a nice little overview of ever all the code that's in your um, file and see that you have a view object a model object, a controller object, this function parse guess is in between, that doesn't hurt anything. And you've got these two key handlers and a net.
And it's sometimes nice just to, to take a look at an overview, almost like a table of contents, which is also what this is. So now you can see that our model has a fire is sunk. And these three methods that we were supposed to be adding to model are in model. Um, my guess is we don't have quite perfect code, but we may have code good enough to run. So why don't we save that? I'm going to control S. Um, I'm going to go over here because this always worked well for me is to go over here and shift refresh. Okay. And so I still have an error, but it's in a different place. Thank goodness. It's in a different place. We have pushed the error off of the top of this generate ships location and down into some other code. And anytime you can push your, your errors down a bit and find something that looks easier to understand, that's always a good deal. So I'm going to go back to the code. What are we looking at? Line 96. Um, and I'm going to, let's see, let's go ahead and unfold all. Unfold all. Okay. So um, anybody know control G? It should work. Control G is line 96. There we go. Um, so something's wrong here. Okay. Let's count our, our parentheses. We've got an open parentheses and a closed parentheses. And here are the open and closed parentheses for math random. So I think all that's happening here is we've got this extra closed parentheses. Instead of closing that parentheses there, we need to close it here. So let's get rid of this one. Okay. That gets rid of that red X. Okay. We're driving, because this code wasn't parsable, from line 81 down before, it, it's never been able to be syntax checked. So don't get discouraged if you fix a big problem and a bunch of small problems crop up, that means you're making progress, okay? And it looks to me like that same problematic syntax when this student typed in that code, they may have copy pasted, or they may simply have typed the same thing over and over again. So we're just gonna go and we're gonna find all the places where, I think we'll just drive this red X down to the bottom of the file. See how the same problem got typed in in all of these calls to math random? So I'm really only fixing one problem. Okay, so all those red X's are gone. And once the red X's are gone, one of the things you can do is apply formatting. Uh, formatting, code formatting. And now the code's jumping in Looking pretty decent. We still have this problem down here. And I think this was just a, I, okay. This return false belongs inside this function someplace. And uh, barring really understanding what's going on here, that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this return statement and I'm simply going to put it in here and see if I can get rid of that. So, okay, we clearly have yet another place where our curly brackets are not lining up well. So let's just double check those. I think we ended up with an extra curly bracket. This, that, if I click over here, I get slight outlining here. And this is the syntax for the bottom of an object. Um, Let's just take a look at that. So here's a short one. When you create an object literal, okay, it ends in a bracket semicolon. So I should be running this code, but, but since this object that we're working in, model, should be ending in a bracket semicolon, we appear to have an extra bracket because um, that one probably matches the one at the top of the object. Yeah, see, see the slight outlining here? It's very faint. Okay, 
So we have an extra curly bracket. Let's eliminate this one because the other one has the right syntax for, okay. And that's not a red X, that's just a break point. So we're gonna get rid of that by clicking it again. Okay. And um, let's try apply formatting. It is always reassuring to me if my code looks good. I feel like the IDE and I are in sync. And I'm not absolutely certain this return false is in the right place. Looks like it kind of by guess, but it's certainly inside a function now, which it wasn't before. And um, if I if I go and I apply code folding and I fold all, what I see is that my I've got a nice view, I've got a nice model. Parse guess is a standalone function. Handle fire button is a standalone function. Handle key press and init are. And all my other code is inside some object. So I think there's some chance this is gonna work. Um, I'm going to uh, run it. Uh, no, I'm not gonna run it because it'll generate errors. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna shift refresh. Okay, and if I look at my console, I no longer have any error messages, which doesn't prove the code works, right? But it proves that you don't have any of those pesky parse errors. So let's, um, let's just try, we've got random ships. Um, what does the book say? The book has this clue for how you tell where your ships are so it's easier to test. Let's take a look at that clue. Um, here. Okay, so there's still, still this change. I don't know what's happening. Um, there's a cheat in here someplace. Control F. Cheat. How to cheat. I love how to cheat. Open up the developer console, type model.ships. Let's take a look at that. Model is an object, right? So let's just do this in step. That's not working. Hang on, my machine seems to be hanging or doing something. I wonder if I've got an infinite loop someplace. See how that's, see how that is um, going around and around? And you can't hear it, I don't think, but the um, fan on my processor is going wild. So I think that someplace in this code, I've got, a, I've got an infinite loop because basically, I can't talk to the console, uh, my machine is going wild, and um, I think I'm just gonna have to kill this process. So I'll just go ahead and kill it here, which may not even work, um, but I can definitely kill it here. Okay. And that should make that go away. Okay. So it would appear that this code has an infinite loop in it someplace. Um, and I'm not gonna try and fix that right now. I suspect that one of the few places we have a loop is here. And Okay, my guess to the, my suggestion to the student would be to look at any of the code that has a loop in it. But I think I've shown you enough now. I mean, what when you get to this point where your code is working and it's parsing, it doesn't mean that you aren't going to have more debugging to do. Okay, um, but it does mean that you finally have code that is actually working well enough that it is ready for more debugging. So that's probably enough for now. Um, I'll decide whether I want to debug the um, infinite loop uh, in another anagram or not. But I, I hope that helps. I mean, the IDE is here to help you. It has these various views of your code. It has features for how to format your code. And then I don't know that this affects the student's view, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, unfold all. Because that folded view can be somewhat alarming if, um, 
if you don't understand what you're looking at, it can look like you've lost a lot of code. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye for now.